Hello, my name's Kyle, and today I'm going to show you how to use our newly installed DTS readers with 70 millimeter film. This is the film and sound that Modern 70 uses, all the way up into the most recent 70 millimeter release of Licorice Pizza. Uh, it's it's pretty straightforward. We just gotta uh, take a different path than we've taken in the past. To start, we need to make sure we have our uh, 70 millimeter film reel still and coming down counterclockwise and we take a bunch of the film and I would take uh, I don't know maybe like three yards of it it takes a just take more than you need this one has a long uh, leader what we do also have now I don't, I don't know if that's in there what we do have now is we also put our film in this so it doesn't touch the floor you never want film to touch the floor especially not 70 millimeter film <laughs> so we go dump it nice in there all right, so the first thing we need to go through is the new DTS reader. So what we're going to do is we're just going to loop through the DTS reader. And it might be a little hard to see, but I'll let you see in a second. So we put it through and make sure it sits nice and easy. And as you can see here, it's actually pulling down a little bit. Uh, see, it goes in easy and it comes out easy and it's not scratching on anything. That's good. This reads the audio and we do not go through the magnetic reader. The next thing we're going to need to go through is the first constant motion sprocket here. Uh, we need to go through this one primarily because 70 is very large and it needs the extra help to pull it. So we pull it nice and tight, make sure it's sitting on the sprockets. You can feel that by just feeling the teeth of your finger. Looks good. We close it. Now it's locked in. The next thing we're going to go through is this pulley right here that kind of moves in and out. And we go around this one to make sure that the film doesn't actually rub against anything on the projector. Now once we go around that, we're going to need to clamp this down onto the next constant motion sprocket. And when we do this, it's very important that's not loose. See, if you leave it loose like this, it's going to scratch on the barrel holder down here. And that is very bad for film. So we're going to pull it nice and tight, pretty much as tight as possible. And we want to make sure and maybe even tug on it a little bit to see if it's coming down. If it's not, that's great. And we can now clamp down on this constant motion sprocket. All right, once we've finished with the second constant motion sprocket, it's time to go through the film gate. So we're going to let the film rest in the film gate and hook it around down here. Once it seems to be resting OK, we want to make sure it doesn't get caught. Excuse me, it doesn't get caught on the uh, pressure bands over here. So see, it's nice and smooth going in. We want to make sure that it is resting on these the intermittent sprocket down here and again we feel it with our fingers it's not sitting over there okay and what we're gonna then do oh excuse me all right there you go now it's sitting better and then we're gonna close it like the other one what we then want to do is close the gate and see what the upper loop is like now if you see here it's actually not tall enough because we want it to be uh, closer to up here so I'm going to open this again. I'm going to open it down here. And I'm going to give it a little bit more film. And this is important for as it, this is what's called the upper loop. And this is to make sure that the film, uh, when it goes to the intermittent sprocket, has space to basically move. I'm going to close this now again. Still feeling the teeth. And now we close the gate again. And then we see it. It's... It's better, but it, it still needs to go up a little more. <laughs> We're going to try it one more time. Uh, this is the hardest part of threading this projector, is just getting this part right. And we want to make sure it's even, too, because if it's uneven, that's not good. All right. All right, now we close it again. All right, that looks good this time. Just checking the teeth. And now we continue down the rest of the path. So. We basically weave in and out in here. This is to keep tension. And we're going to need to make sure that as we approach this last one down here that we give it what's called the lower loop. And the lower loop allows it to, again, when it flexes going through the intermittent sprocket. So in this case, I want to feed it a few. So let's give it a rough estimate of something like that. So if you pull up, that is not enough. We need more still. So something like that. See that there is a clear loop here. If we pull it, it can go in and out. And you want to make sure if you push it back that way, it doesn't get any bigger because we don't have to scrape against anything over here. Now that, that looks fine to me. 
And then of course we close this down here, make sure it's locked in. All right, the last part is again, we go through the bottom part here, more film rollers to make sure it guides onto the reel properly. We're gonna take the end of the film, give it a little tape. And then we're just gonna make sure this is going in clockwise. We're gonna tape it down. And then we're just gonna lightly spin it until it stops. All right, it has now stopped. All right, first thing we want to make sure when we're reviewing is that the lock is closed here so that the reel will pop off. We then make sure the reel is going counterclockwise. As we go down, we can then see that it goes to the DTS reader properly. You can see that it is sitting properly in between the wheels here and that it doesn't appear anything's pinched or scraping. We then follow it down to make sure it's not rubbing against anything in the projector and it's sitting in the constant motion sprocket properly with the gate closed, or the chute closed, excuse me. We then make sure that it's going around this pulley here that actually moves, but we want to make sure that there's not slack enough for it to scrape against anything and that it is sitting on the next constant motion sprocket properly with the chute closed. We then check the upper loop, which you can see right here goes through or close enough to this moon thing right here. And then we check that the path continues to sit okay. Nothing, no issues of pressure bands. And we make it down to the lower loop here and the intermittent sprocket where it's sitting properly. We can feel with our finger a little bit to make sure that we, we feel teeth and that's sitting okay. And we continue down, uh, going through the little path here that we weave in and out until we get to the last constant motion sprocket. Again, checking teeth, making sure the upper loop is still good. And lastly, we go through the the film pinch rollers, uh, film rollers right here, and that it's taped onto the lower reel in a clockwise manner with the last lock closed. All right, now before we uh, run this, what we first want to do is do trial advance, and that is advancing the motor slowly and making sure the film moves and nothing, you don't hear any bad sounds or anything like that. Basically, it's just like a, it's like a trial, it, it's literally called a trial advance, we're making sure it advances. So I crank it a few times, I see film coming in and out. I don't see anything getting too big, I don't see anything scraping against anything. So that should be good. I'm just gonna let it sit again, right in threading position. And now it's time to run the film. All right, now you know how to thread the 70 millimeter DTS for our DP70 projector. Uh, stay tuned for our next video on how to run DTS 70 and what it sounds like and all the other stuff associated with it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. If you have any comments, please ask them because we'd be more than happy to answer them.